Hi, today we're going to be learning about rounding off decimal fractions. Rounding off is an important skill that you need to have, and so it's important for you to make sure that you know how to do it properly. Before we get on to rounding off decimal fractions, I just want to remind you about the rules for rounding off in general, Things that rules that you should already know. So the first example we're going to look at over here is just a normal rounding off question. You've got the number 8306, 878, and we need to round this off to the nearest 1000. So the process you're going to follow when you're going to round off is first you need to identify which digit in that number is in the position that you need to round off to. So we need to round off to the nearest thousand. So that is over here, that's the thousands position. So I need to identify that digit over there. That is what I want to know what I must do to it. Is it going to stay the same or is it going to change? Okay, that's my thousands position. In order to know what to do to that, I need to find out I need to find the digit that will tell me what to do to it, and that is the next digit, the digit straight after the 6, which is the 8 over there. When you are rounding off, you first identify the digit in the position that you're rounding off to, and then you look at the digit straight after it, the next digit, and that will tell you what to do to this digit that you identified over here. So over here, if this digit is 5 or more, then this digit over here is going to go up one. If this digit is four or less, then that digit over here is going to stay the same. Okay. So that is what we need to identify first of all, is what is this telling us we must do to that, okay? Once we've done that, once we've figured that out, so in this case over here, the eight fits into the five or more category, so that means that we need to go up one with the six. It needs to change from six, go up one, it's gonna to change to seven. Then once I know that, all of the digits after the thousands position, after whatever I'm running off to, are going to change to zeros. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write over here 8, so first of all, 8306878 is approximately equal to, and now the rounded off value, 8, 3, 0, and then we said the 6 is going to change to a 7 because the 8 is in the 5 or more category, so that's going to change to a 7 because when it's 5 or more, it needs to go up 1, so that's going to be 7. And then everything after that is going to change to zeros. So this is going to be zero, zero, zero for those over there which are changing to zeros. So that's the process we're going to follow when we are rounding off. First you identify what, which digit in your number is in the position that you're rounding off to. Then you look at the next digit and see is it five or more or is it four or less. That will tell you what to do to the digit that you're rounding off to. Once you know what you must do, is it going to go up one or is it going to stay the same? Then you change that and everything after that changes to zeros. So that's the process you're going to be following while you're doing the examples or the questions in this activity now. So over here, you are rounding off these four numbers to whatever you're told in the question. So they're all different. You need to make sure that you pay attention to what you're being told to do for each one. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's see what you got for each of those. So in the first one, you had to round this off to the nearest thousand. So first you have to identify where is the thousands position. That is this one over here. So the four is in our thousands position. So we need to find out what to do to the four. And to find that out, we need to look at the number or the digit that is straight after it. So that's this nine over here. Nine is in the five or more category, which means that the four is going to go up one. So it's going to go up from four and change to five. And everything after that is going to change to zero. So we're going to end up with five. And then the four changes to five. And then we have zero, zero, zero. So that's what we should have got for the first one. The next we need to round off to the nearest hundred. So now we identify the digit that's in the hundreds position. That is the seven over here. We need to find out what we must do to that by looking at the next digit, which is the three over here. The three is in the four or less category. That means that the seven must stay the same. So when I round this off, I'm going to have four, and then the seven stays the same, and then everything after it changes to zero, so that's zero, zero. So that's what we should have got for, num for question B. Question C, we have 105412, we need to round this off to the nearest 10,000. So first identify the digit that's in the 10,000s position, that is this one over here. And I need to find out what to do to that by looking at the next digit, which is this one over there, the 5. The 5 is in the 5 or more category, that means that the 0 is going to go up 1. So it's going to change from 0 to 1. So I'm going to end up with 1, and then the 0 changes to 1. And then everything after that changes to zeros. So zero, 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 zero. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then question D, we're rounding off to the nearest 10. So over here, the, the tens position is the eight over there. I need to find out what to do to that by looking at the next digit, which is the two. The two is in the four or less category. That means it's the eight is going to stay the same. So that's going to stay eight over there. And I'm going to change this. This is going to be 5, 8, 4. And then the 8 stays the same, but the 2 is going to change to a 0. And that's where you end up with for question D. So that's what you should have got for each of those questions. Right, now let's have a look at an example like this one over here. Now in this example, we have got the number 3, 3, 1, six two nine seven four seven and we need to round this off to the nearest thousand so you might think that this is going to be basically the same kind of things that we did in the last one and it is but there is a slight difference and that's because if we look at the digit that's in the thousands position it is a nine now anytime you're rounding off to some to a value that is it that is a nine like this over here so we're rounding off to the nearest thousand and in the number we've been given the digit in the thousands position is a nine. You have to be careful because if it goes up one, then you end up with 10, which is going to be a problem. So that's what we need to be aware of what to do here. So in this case, if I look at that nine, I need to find out what must I do to the nine by looking at the number after it, the digit after it, which is the seven. So this seven is in the five or more category. That means that the nine has to go up one. And when it goes up one, it changes to 10. So the nine is going to change to 10. But now my problem is that 10 has got two digits. It doesn't only have one digit like all the other examples we've done so far. 10 has two digits. Now I can't change the nine to 10 and end up with three, three, one, six, two, one, zero, and then zero, 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 because now I'm suddenly making the number a lot bigger by adding an extra digit into the number. So I can't do that. So what I need to do is when I have a nine that changes to a 10, the nine actually changes to zero and the digit in front of the nine is going to go up one instead. So what I actually have happening over here is 29 is going up to 30. Instead of nine going up to 10, I'm adding that 10 onto the digit in front. So the two is going up one to three. So what I end up with is this. So I have three, three, one, six, two, nine, seven, four, seven is approximately equal to, and then over here, these are going to stay the same, three, three, one, and then the six stays the same, but over here, 
because the 9 is going to go up 1 and make 10, the 2 has to change to a 3, and then the 9 changes to a 0, and then everything after that is zeros as well. Okay, so you need to be careful. When the number or the digit that is in the position that you have to round off to is a 9, if it is going to go up 1, then you have to change the digit in front of it up 1 and change the 9 to a 0. Okay, so just be careful about that. So you need to be, you, you're going to be using that in the examples uh, in this activity now as well. So over here, you've got again four numbers that you're going to round off. You're going to have to round off to whatever you're told to over here. Make sure that you pay attention to what you've been told to round off to and be careful about nines. And I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on this activity. Okay, so let's go through each of those. So over here, the first one, we had to round us off to the nearest thousand. So what we need to do is identify which digit is in the thousands position. That is this nine over here. Okay, now if we look at the digit straight after it to find out what we must do to that nine, it's a six. Now six is in the five or more category. That means that this is going to go up one. But when nine goes up one, it changes to ten which means that this is going to change to a nine over there because it must go up one. So that's going to be two, nine, zero. And then everything after it changes to zeros, zero, zero, zero. So for that one, you should have got 290,000. The next one, we are rounding this off to the nearest 10. So over here, the tens position is this nine over here. I look at the digit straight after it to find out what to do to that nine. This is a 1. It is in the 4 or less category, which means that the 9 is going to stay the same. Now, just because it's a 9 doesn't automatically mean that you're going to make it go up 1 and change to 10, and the digit in front changes um, and goes up 1. If the digit after the 9 is 4 or less, then it stays the same like it did in all the other ones we did before. So this is still just going to be 7, 7, 1, and then 7, 9, and then after it, the 1 changes to a 0. So just be careful. If it's a 9, it doesn't automatically mean that it's going to go up. Okay, it ha depends on what is after that 9. The next one, we've got 9,877. We are rounding off to the nearest 1,000. That is this 9 over here. We need to look at the digit after the 9, which is the 8. The 8 is in the 5 or more category. That means that the 9 is going to go up 1. Now, there's no digit in front of the 9 here, but when the 9 goes up 1, that's going to change to a 0, and 
even though there's nothing in front of it, it is actually a zero in front of it, which means the zero is going to go up one and become one. So I end up with one and then the nine changes to a zero and then everything after it changes to zeros as well. So it's going to be 10,000. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then question D, we are rounding this off to the nearest 100, which is this one over here. Now the nine that's in the hundreds position is not the only nine in this number. There's a nine over here and a nine over here, and that is going to affect what we're going to be doing over here. But first, let's have a look and see what we must do to this nine by looking at the digit after it, which is a five. Because it's five, it means that this nine has to go up one. But now, if the nine goes up one, it's going to change to a zero, and this has to go up one, making ten. Exactly the same thing is going to happen as what we were doing over here. If this changes to a 10, it's going to affect the digit in front of it. So if this changes to a 10, it also changes to 0, and this must go up 1. Same thing. 9 changes to 10, that becomes 0, and this goes up 1. So that's going to become a 4 over there. So what I end up with for this one, the 3 changes to 4, and everything else is going to change to zeros. So it's going to be 3, and then... Oh, 3 changes to 4, and then 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 0. So for this one, you should have got 400,000, because all of the 9s are going to end up changing, because this 5 made that change, which made this change, which made this change, which made the 3 change to a 4. Okay, so that's what we should have got for that example. Right, now we're going to go on to rounding off decimal fractions, which is what our goal was in this uh, lesson over here. But all the rules that we have learned up until this point are going to apply while we are rounding off decimal fractions. It's just we're going to be working with different place value positions in our number. So the first example we're going to do is this one over here. We're rounding this off to two decimal places. We've got the number 9,98742. And we need to round this off to two decimal places. Now, just like we were doing with rounding off before, the first thing we're going to do identify uh, the first thing we're going to do is identify the digit that's in the position that we need to round off to. So two decimal places is the second decimal place over here, that is the eight. Okay, so that is what I need to find out what I must do to that digit. I need to find out what must I do to the eight by looking at the digit straight after it. So the rule the process is going to be exactly the same. I look at the digit straight after, it's a 7. And I use that to help me to know what I must do to the 8. 7 is in the 5 or more category, that means that the 8 is going to go up 1. So that 8 is going to change to a 9. So 9, 9,98742 is approximately equal to, and when I round this off, it's going to be 9, 9, and then the 8 changes to a 9, and everything after it changes to zeros. Okay, but now because we're working with now decimal fractions, I'm now working after the comma. I don't need to write those zeros if there's nothing else after it that's going to have a non zero value. I don't need to write any zeros. So there is an imaginary zero for that 7 and for the 4 and for the two, but I don't need to write them. I can just write 9,99. So I can just say that it is approximately equal to 9,99. Okay, so when you're rounding off to two decimal places, you're not going to write all those extra zeros. You only write zeros that are between the unit and any other non-zero digits. But if it's after any other non-zero digits, or if it's before the unit, and before any other non-zero digits, then we don't need to write extra zeros. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. So now you're going to be using that same process to do the examples in this activity. So here you're rounding off each of these to different positions. The first one is to the nearest whole number, then to one decimal place, to two decimal places, and to three decimal places. And I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on this activity.
Okay, so let's go through each of those. So the first one, you had to round off to the nearest whole number. So you need to identify which digit is in the whole numbers position. That is this three over here. So I need to know what must I do to the three by looking at the digit straight after it, which is the six. Okay, so the six is in the five or more category, which means that the three is going to go up one and change to four. And that gives us one, four, and then the three changes to a four. And then everything after it is going to change to zeros. So I don't actually need to write the comma at all because everything after the comma is just zero. So I just have 144. The next one, we've got 781,516. We don't need to round this off to, the, to one decimal place. So the five is in the first decimal place position. I need to look at the digit straight after that, which is this one, to know what to do to the five. The one is in the four or less category. That means that this five is going to stay the same. Everything after it changes to zeros. So I'm going to have seven, eight, one, comma, the five stays the same, and everything after it changes to zeros, but because it's after the comma, I don't need to write those zeros. So it's just seven, eight, one, comma, five. Next one, I've got 939, 9,39813. The digit that I'm rounding off to in this play, in this example is to two decimal places. So I need to find the digit that's in the second decimal place, which is the nine over here. I need to find out what to do to that nine by looking at the digit straight after it, which is the eight. The eight is in the five or more category, which means that the nine is going to go up one, changing to 10. Now, just like we had in the examples in the last um, set of questions, when you've got a 9 that changes to a 10, the 9 is going to change to a 0 and the digit in front of it is going to go up 1. So the, the 3 is going to change to a 4. So this is going to be 9, comma, the 3 changes to a 4, the 9 changes to 0 and everything else after it also changes to 0 and because they're after the comma I don't need to write any of those zeros. So I just have 9, comma, 4. So that's what you should have got for question C. In the last one, question D, we have to round this off to three decimal places. So first, the digit that's in the third decimal uh, place is this one over here. It's that zero. I look at the digit straight after it, which is the two, to find out what to do to that zero. Now that two is in the four or less category. Because it is less than five, the zero is going to stay zero. And everything else after it is also going to be zero. So when I round this off, I'm going to have one, and then everything after that comma is zeros. So I don't need to write any of them. So I'm just going to leave it as one. And that's you should get that for that example. And that's how we round off decimal fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.